Hello, it's Mark from Cars and Cameras, and that footage you just saw was from the Nikon Z50. And we're going to take a look at this little camera today, and I will give you my thoughts on it. There's several things that I like about it, and there's several things that I don't like about it. The first thing uh, we'll talk about is let's take a look at the image quality. Now, this is 4K footage from the camera, shot at 1 50th of a second, and it's not bad. This is with the 16 to 50 kit lens, and it looks pretty good. Now you have to remember these are plastic mount kit lenses and the zoom ring is kind of rough, uh, but the images you can get out of them are pretty nice. Now this 4K shot here, everything you're gonna to see today is all 4K 24P uh, footage and um, it looks pretty good. Now I shot this all in the flat uh, picture profile and I added a LUT to the footage to see what we can do. And this is a Technicolor LUT and it looks pretty good. It brings the colors out. Now you can tweak them further. I just want to just add the LUT and see what it could do. And it's not bad. Now, as I was playing with the camera, my favorite lens is probably the 50 to 250 telephoto lens. I like that better than this lens. This lens just feels really cheap, but it does work pretty good. As you can see here, um, it's pretty sharp. And for a kit lens, um, it's just the lens is just kind of rough. Now let's talk about uh, some things that I don't like about the camera. Now, most of the time when I was shooting, I shot all manual uh, and let the camera pick the proper ISO because when I put it in um, shutter priority to lock my shutter speed at 150th, it wouldn't do it. It floated around like it was in automatic mode. And most of the time it picked 1 25th of a second. And I'll talk more about why it does that, why it defaults to that. Now let's take a look at some uh, footage. This is with the 15 to 250. And the shot that I have here, this is with optical stabilization. And the camera can also do optical and digital stabilization. So that's what this shot is here. Now, if you keep the camera stationary, it does a pretty good job. But if you move it around, I do not recommend using it. It kind of kind of has a judder to it and it doesn't look good. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that sample here. So here is that 50 to 250. And as I said before, it is my a favorite of the two kit lenses. And you can see here all this footage handheld. You can see zoomed all the way in. Um, it does a pretty good job, you know, focusing on that car coming in. Now, I will tell you that uh, this camera, while it, it does produce some pretty nice images, the phase detection autofocus in this camera is nowhere near the same as like a Sony camera uh, with their phase detection. The phase detection in a Sony camera is much better. I had to kind of set these shots up first and pre-focus them. But once I did that and I pre-focused everything, uh, the camera tended to uh, you know, lock focus and then it was starting to keep up. It was just that initial reaction. Now, I don't know it's because of these cheap kit lenses. You know, if you buy the more expensive Nikon Z mount, uh, dedicated lenses for the camera. Are they still going to have this issue? I'm not sure, but you know, I found like with the Sony kit lenses, they work fine with the uh, phase detection autofocus. So I really think it's an issue with the camera and not the lenses. Okay, let's look at some night footage. You can see here now, this is some footage that really blew me away at 25,000 ISO with the 15 to 250. And normally, uh, you know, footage out of a camera like this with this low light would just look terrible, uh, but it looks really great. I know some people say this is an older sensor, and then uh, some people say it's a, a new sensor. I'm not really sure the correct answer on that, but I can tell you from this footage, um, especially, you know, the night footage, it looks pretty good. Uh, you know, this was, like I said, this was all with that 15 to 250 of testing the camera out. I had this lens on the most. Now, when I shot the security guard here, when I first got him, he was completely out of focus. The camera could not uh, uh, lock a focus on him, and then it kind of did, but it was a little soft there. Now, the camera does have a selfie mode, as you can see here, and it's kind of awkward and tight to get the camera to do it, but it does work. But you can see it completely covers up your tripod socket, so that's not a good thing. Um, I wasn't really impressed with that. I mean, it's nice that it does it, but it kind of seems like an afterthought. Now, let's look at some footage uh, comparing the 16 to 50 uh, with the 15 to 250. And here's a nice wide shot with the uh, at 16 millimeters. And um, it does a pretty good job. It's not bad. Uh, like I said, uh, of the two lenses, I do like that 15 to 250 better. 
uh, but you can judge for yourself. Uh, like I said, that would be the lens I would have on it most of the time, but you know, you're not going to be able to get wide shots like this. Um, now in the next one coming up here, uh, we're going to go to 50 millimeters and, um, you can see, um, it does do a pretty good job, um, at 50, uh, you know, it's not bad, but of the two lenses, uh, definitely that 15 to 250 is a nicer lens and you'll see that in a second here. So it's not all bad with the 16 to 50 kit lens. Uh, one thing about it being small and light, um, it does lend itself well to gimbal use. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier, comparing the two lenses. Look how much brighter uh, this lens is, and there's just the details in it with the 50 to 250 uh, uh, telephoto lens. Uh, as you can see here, I mean, everything to me, it just looks a lot brighter. Uh, the colors look better, and they were both graded exactly the same way. I mean, there's just a huge difference. And then a really cool thing about this camera, on that kind of whip pan over to the lady with the dog, you see almost no rolling shutter. And, you know, you'll see a lot of jelloing with the Sony 6100 in video, especially in 4K video. Uh, you know, the Nikon uh, wins hands down. But like I said, there is that issue with the phase detection autofocus. Don't know if it's going to be able to be fixed in a firmware upgrade. But for right now, as of making this video, uh, it's kind of a no-go. So let's take a quick look at some video, and then we'll wrap this up, some night shots. And... Um, they look pretty good with this Technicolor LUT. Uh, I was really impressed on how well this camera performed, you know, at night uh, in the high ISO environment, uh, and especially with these kit lenses, you know, and being an APS-C crop sensor, it did do a good job. So let's recap what we talked about earlier. Great little camera. I don't like the 16 to 50 uh, zoom lens. I like the uh, telephoto lens, the 50 to 250. I'm not a big fan of the phase detection autofocus and video. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And there's more video coming up at the end of this video to watch.